Hello and welcome back to Wales of the UK where I paint away the stress of everyday life. I've got a 15 by 12 canvas panel and um, it's just a cheap one I bought from a pound shop. Yeah, so pop along there. You can pick them up for about one ninety nine. so why waste money? And I put a, a burnt ember ground on that and um, just to knock back the, the white of the canvas because that's what you do. You don't want it too bright. And um, let's have a quick look at the colours I've got here today. As you can see, I've got my own range of colours now. Um, i got a Kunta blue, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and plus loads of others. i got primaries, uh, reds, yellows, blues, and all that in the shop. Please pop along there, where you can find my medium mix, brushes, and other things. And that's www.cly5art.co.uk. So please have a look. And there's other articles and things you can read in there as well, if you just want to pop along. So we've got some cerulean blue, some, um, some ultramarine blue. I've got my Indian yellow. There, I've got my yellow ochre, I've got a, a, um, a medium yellow, and I've got some burned umber, black and white. And um, I'll just put them one side because we don't want to get them dirty. So, um, yeah, and range of brushes. Wow, look, you've got such a range of brushes these days. We really get inundated, and that's just a handful of the brushes I've actually got in stock. You can see the rest behind me there. So what do we do? How do we decide what we're going to pick, uh, what we're going to use? Do we just pick up a brush and, and, and go for it? <laughs> or do we use a little bit of savvy, as they say? So what we want, we're going to put, put in a sky in. I put a, an horizon line. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but I, I, when, I, when I decide on a brush to use for the sky, I tend to go for something like a one inch short flat um, and a quite a soft bristle as well because we want the paint to move. And we want to use that X stroke like that. So I'm going to take my time on this lesson today because I've done a few quick ones uh, recently. And um, I thought, let's take a little bit of time and let's explain things in a little bit more detail for you if you've just started out or you just want to improve or just want to learn a few things. So I'm picking up some decorators painting tape or masking tape, as I know it. And um, we're going to peel a little bit of that off. Now... This is 12 inches there. Um, I've decided to go 5 inches up. Um, have more sky than land. Or sometimes you can have more land than sky. So it depends where you want that horizon. You make that choice. So I can pick up a bit of masking tape like that. Or a bit of painter's tape. Or whatever you want to call it. And what I tend to do is I just t tap it on some on some material. Your clothes, your shirt or something. I just get a, don't, you, don't want it, you don't want it too sticky. You want it tacky. You don't want it to rip the paint off. So I want to go as straight as I possibly can there. I think I might take that up a little bit, actually. I might go up a little bit more. There we are. We'll have a little bit more beach than, than sky. Why did I decide to do that? Because I'm thinking of composition. You've got to think of... You've got to think about the balance of the painting. You, you need a focal point. Um... You need some interest in there. We've got to work on the sky first, though, but we'll, we'll talk about interest and points of interest and that in a second, and focal points and things. So I'm just going to moisten my <coughs> palette, because I do that anyway, just as as a matter of fact. Now, if you were having trouble with your water, with your water, if you're having trouble with your water staying wet, if you're having trouble with your, your paint staying wet and workable, just get a, a mister bottle and just mist down your your canvas you can mist the other side of this and, uh, and wet it so it doesn't dry so quick um, I haven't done that in this case but I'm just putting a, a little bit of moisture just on the surface of my canvas it's just to stop that paint being sucked into that canvas because we don't want it to dry too quick and there's other tips and that we can use so I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue I'm going to put a bit of this ultramarine blue together so we've got a cerulean blue and ultramarine blue mix and I'm just going to bring a touch of white down to the edge of my brush like that there we go and what I'm going to do I'm going to start in the top right hand corner I'm going to go into a, a crisscross shape and I'm just going to work my way down now you, you want to top the sky slightly darker and this is um, like a summer's day so we, we, we I'm going to peter out the sky there a little bit like that so I'm not going to go straight along you can see that I've got a bit of a an angle on that darkness there now I'm going to pick up just a little bit more white on my brush there you go and I'm going to go straight in no more blue just using the blue that's actually on the brush and I'm just going to lighten that bit of sky up like that 
and with the moisture that we've got on the on the canvas that we just sprayed on it's just going to help that blend of color that blue and that white together now you can see it's a little bit more dark there so we just get a little bit more white on our brush use your your imagination now and think of sky i've got a reference photo which i'm going off so i don't have to think too hard because it's a bit difficult trying to talk and paint at the same time i'm going in a, a bit more white here and this was a photograph i took um down in um i think it was barry island down that way which is down in um Penarth, if you're, if you're familiar with parts of Wales, Penarth and Barry are all down on the south coast of Wales. And um, this was taken um, a few years ago, in fact, and I've only just now got round to, to painting this painting. Um, but you can see I've got a patches of white and patches of blue, and you can see that already you, you've got elements of possible clouds there. And I'm just very lightly just going to blend across like that just to soften that down get rid of all those brush strokes don't want any brush strokes in that sky today so I'm just going to put my brush down um, I'm going to select another brush um, again I don't really I just pick up a brush I think that's going to work and I've just got a, a, another short flat so you know I have a selection of brushes but don't worry too much about the quality of these brushes you want something like a student grade quality brush you don't want to spend too much money if you're just learning so i've got some paint on that brush quite heavily loaded and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go around in little circles like this just little circles i want to put some really heavy cloud in here today i'm trying to dry brush as i'm coming down to the bottom of that cloud i'm just lifting pressure off the brush a little bit and just smoothing that in just getting that little bit of a shadow in the bottom of that cloud without working too hard and i'm going to bring Got a little lump of paint there. I don't know if you can see that little lump of paint that I've got on there. Let me see if I can show you on that camera. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but I'm using that to load paint on. So that's going to be brighter in front of that one. So it looks as if it's in front of that one because there's a shadow there. And I'm just going to dry brush the bottom of this brush. And just smooth the bottom of that cloud out. Like that. Now, if you've never painted clouds before, don't don't overthink them. Just just make little marks, and they will they will they will develop on their own. Don't think too much about clouds. Just and this in this particular case, these are actually fluffy clouds today, but um, they're not always fluffy. So just just bear that in mind, and just make some shapes. Just let your let your brush do the work for you. Bring some white in front of the shadow area. Just to let that balance out. This is quite a a cloud filled sky today I'm going to put a bit more paint on my brush I'm just going to emphasize this one a little bit more there dry brush now stop at that stage and I suggest you get yourself um, um, a blending brush and these are available on the website um, but I don't want to sell you everything that I've got <laughs> but you can well you're welcome to go along and buy it if you want to <laughs> I need the money <laughs> no, it all helps to produce these lessons uh, and that's why I do it but um, you can use a, a ladies makeup brush if you want if, uh, if, if we haven't got the funds for that then um, that's fine as well so we need to just tickle the back of your hand just get the brush Get the brushes like I'm showing you there and just uh, just rub that brush across the back of your hand like I'm just if you've got hairy hands like I've got you can feel the, the bristles touching the hairs and that's the type of pressure you want you don't want a lot of pressure and you're just gonna very very gently in a circular motion like this circular motion very quick but not touching and you're just blending that a cloud together blending it in blending it in so what a lovely way to the paint nice and relaxed painting away that stress of everyday life a little bit harder there just to blend that into the sky there we are we got some we got some nice clouds blowing this way by the looks of it yes we got a westerly wind and if we get a westerly wind where i live it's going to rain i think i don't know if you can hear they put it in pattering down onto the roof of the my uh, studio but it certainly is today 
And I believe I had a bit of snow today too, so it's quite strange. There we are. Okay, let's just get a... I want some heavier cloud down here. And this is so far away, it all looks as if it's joined together. It's almost like it's one big cloud, but it's not. It's individual clouds, but because of the distance, it looks as if they're all, all one cloud, but it isn't. It's just distance. There you go. Let's just put a little bit more white, brighter white, down there, just to bring in some... There you go, and we get the blending brush again. Tickle in the back of your hand. And blending that in. So don't worry about clouds, don't think about clouds, just do shapes. They, they, they'll develop on their own. There is no particular shape to a cloud. There's not a particular shape to a cloud. There's different types of clouds, and they tend to, to look similar. But when we think of clouds, we think of big fluffy things. And they're not always like that. So just just use your imagination, let your imagination run with you, and you'll find painting clouds are a lot easier then. So we've got our horizon line in, we've got our we've got our um, sky in, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer. Um, I guess we again it is. I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer because I don't want to, I'm going to add some different colours there, and I don't want them to go um, wishy-washy, so I need a dry surface, so I'm going to just dry that off. Okay, so I haven't gone to the bother of drying it all completely. I just wanted to dry the section that I'm going to be painting. I'm just, I've just got this horrible feeling that my phone is going to go off. So I'm just going to set that on silent. So using the same brush, um, I'm going to go into some burnt umber. And a little bit of black. There we go. I might even bring some of this lovely Indian yellow that I've made up. Just going to put some land in, there's a little headland that comes out there like that, a little peninsula maybe, I don't know what it's called, and that's going to come there like that then. Try and get the land shape correct, there we go, now I'm going to lighten that up a touch because I want to come forward a bit, and just adding a little bit of black, a little bit of burned umber, a little bit of white. I'm going to be adding colour to this in a second, but I want to get this land lighter than that because I want it to stand out in front of it. There we go. Actually looks a little bit like Tembi now. <laughs> it's a lovely little area. If you ever get a chance to visit Wales, and there's some fantastic places around. There's castles. You've got Carmarthen Castle, Caerphilly Castle, you've got Castle Corfe, you've got Cardiff Castle. Uh, you've got Pembroke Castle, you've got, oh, I, I, I've lost count how many castles there are in Wales. Um, there's, there's Roman remains and absolutely fantastic uh, places to visit. You've got the St. Fagans Museum you can go to, which is a natural life museum. Um, I'm hoping to do a little trip there one day and find something to paint. Maybe take the camera with me and who knows. That could be interesting. So that's a little bit of headland there. We can get a bit of colour into that. Um, we can get a little bit of yellow and blue. We can make a nice green. And don't forget, you can mix yellow and black. If you've got a Mars black, you can mix a bit of yellow with that, and that'll give you a nice, a nice green. Because it's got blue in it, it's a blue biased. Well, they say biased is an undertone of blue. So somebody says biased to you. As far as painting is concerned, the blue, the blue has got a bias to it. It's got a green undertone. Um, cerulean blue tends to be a little bit green. Um, it's it's a, bit of a bit of a difficult colour to mix purples with. Ultramarine blue can be, um, it can it, it, that can be like a warm. It can have red in it. It can have more red than, and uh, 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 and it's just that's a funny colour to mix as well. Ultramarine blue, yeah, it's a very funny colour that one. A little bit darker. So that can tend to be a little bit biased as well. Um, it can be a, a bluer ultramarine blue or a or a redder ultramarine blue. You can some ultramarine blues. You add, if you want to know what the bias of a colour is, if you're not too sure, just add a little bit of white to it, and um, 
and, and lighten it down and you'll see or you should see the undertone of that particular color then so I'm just gonna add a little bit of dark green here and there like this just to put it a, into a bit of shadow so if you're not too sure just I'll do a little search on Google or something to see cerulean blue what's the undertone of cerulean blue as we've all got mobile phones and iPads and laptops and computers and, and we don't use Google as much as we should in my experience anyway so we've got a bit of green there now I'm quite happy with that um, for the moment that is I'm just gonna wash my brushes I'm gonna dry that headland now and before I remove the masking tape okay that'll do uh, there's a little bit of a, a thick spot there which I'm just gonna rub down with my finger just to blend that pink in so it'll dry a bit quicker and take a masking tape off and you can see I've got a wonderful straight wonderful straight um, straightish as far as I can see it's straight <laughs> sitting on an angle um, horizon line now we can work on that on that again but I want to try and think about getting some um, sand or water or something in so I'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna pick up another short flat that I've got here and um, I want to get some cerulean blue I just thinned it down with a little bit of my medium mix that's actually a, a resin based um, solution that you can add water to uh, up to about 30 percent and then that's all you use then to thin your paints and that doesn't underpaint your your paints because there's enough resin in that to actually work with the paints to stop them thinning yes that's a bit too light uh dark sorry getting ahead of myself now so we want to i like the horizon so just add in a little bit of white until you find the color you're looking for and then you can put the masking tape across there now if you wanted to but i'm, I'm just lazy i'm just going to hopefully be able to follow that line Again, like the sky, I've got a little bit of a darker colour blue on my brush, so I'm just trying to make myself, my life a little bit easier. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of that colour in, like a multitude of colours there that I've got on my brush. You've got paint on your brush, don't waste it, this is what I'm trying to say. Again, C is not always blue like this. Um, round where I live, it tends to be a very brown type of colour. It's it's a horrible looking. Um, it's horrible because I, Barry, uh, this is where this is, Barry Island, um, part of Penarth and Barry, because we live in because it's on the Channel, the, the British Channel. It's on the British Channel, so it tends to have a lot of. It looks mucky then, it doesn't look blue like this. But on Tembi, then you'll get this type of colour. But for the sake of a painting, you don't want a dirty brown sea. You can pull a bit of that undertone, the, the ground that I put down, you can see that starting to come through there. As I'm putting the paint on quite thinly. And you can see that's kind of come through there. And maybe it'd bring a little bit more white. I want, want it to be a bit lighter here now because the water's lower. There's, it's not as deep there, so it's gonna it's gonna start showing through the sand and stuff that we put in place. So I, I I want to bring the water a bit further, but I'm I'm gonna stop it there because I need to put some sand and stuff down. I want some underlining colour there, so we've got to think of that as well. And I've got to put some rock rocks and things in. Um, are they going to be around here so I want some water to come down here so I'm going to start putting the sand in I think so I'm just going to change my brush I'm going to pick up oops this watch lost my headset I lost my headset and I had to, re, had to put it back on my ear it fell off <laughs> so I got some yellow Indian yellow a little bit of yellow these are the colors I made myself and they, they're quite nice colors 
I couldn't find an Indian yellow really um, that I liked. Um, that's what started to spur me off on these things, and um, I couldn't find an Indian yellow that I liked really, and and, and that was um, affordable um, because a lot of companies don't make that colour. Um, I've only found a couple of manufacturers that actually make that in acrylics, and um, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to that because I want to darken it as well. Um, just to get that sand looking effect. There you go. So I thought, right, I'll make my own. So I, I was in the process of actually deciding to start making my own acrylic paints because um, when I do my own private work, uh, my paintings, I'd like to use pigments from around where I... I've been doing a lot of mines and things, let me explain. I've been painting a lot of um, coal mines and... Um, pit heads and, and coal miners and all this type of stuff because I'm, I'm, I've got a, a series of paintings that I'm working on and I wanted to use the the pigments from around these places like I would go to um, a certain pit or a, an area where I knew there was used to be an old coal mine and I'd pick up some coal dust and stuff like that and I'd uh, make that into, into pigment <clears throat> and I'd use that pigment then to paint a picture of my miner, etc. I'd done a similar thing um, several weeks ago where I, I went to an iron ore mine and I was picking up, because I was painting the mine, um, because I had some reference photographs of it. Um, it was the only iron ore mine in Wales, in fact. And I wanted to paint a lot of the ground area and the foreground with the actual colour, ground colour that was there. I thought it would be fun if I actually mix some colour there and I found some iron ore dust particles, not so much dust particles but bits of iron ore which I managed to uh, grind down and I've used that for another painting. I made my own iron oxide and and it's a process that I've, I've really enjoyed doing. So I'm just building up this sand, you can see it got a couple of different colours. Molly's barking at a seagull out there, if you want to know what she's doing. <laughs> this is a seagull squawking. I'm not too far from the coast. So um, I'm going to a bit light up here now. So they drive her up the wall actually. I'm going to have to bring Molly into the studio again one day. Because she does enjoy sitting on my lap when I'm painting. But I'll put the links to the um, acrylic painting um, lessons. Acrylic making, acrylic paint making lessons in the iCards for you. Which is in the top right hand corner. You'll see a little bar every so often pop across and that's what you want to click on to if you want to go and see these videos um, I've got them in playlists so they're all in there there you go now that, but that's interesting to see how acrylic paint is made and I'm actually going to be doing um, another series of videos um, on that process anyway um, I'm going to take you into how a paint is actually made that's interesting because I think it's, it's it's a good thing to know what these paints can do because we, we're so scared of acrylics. A lot of people are, can't get on with them because they don't work the way they want, they don't dry, they dry so fast and, and you know, it's um, how can you work with that like that and how, how can you stop them from drying? Well, you can see I've been painting continuously here um, and I haven't had no trouble at the moment with my paints drying because well, if you work in sections, like I was working on the sea area, I'm coming down to the sand, so I've painted down there first, now I'm working up here. Now if I come back down here, that should be dry enough for me to, to paint on without actually having any paint left. And you'll see it, occasionally I'll come to a section like that and I'll, and I'll, I'll stop and I'll move somewhere else because I, I can feel the paint or I can see the paint starting to, to lift because the surface of acrylic paint will dry um, before the underlining layers of the acrylic paint so if I put a line like that you know, the top is going to form a skin just because the top is dry doesn't necessarily mean that the underneath that is dry so when you come across again with some wet paint it's going to break that tension uh, or that surface of that um, that's formed and it's going to pull the paint off and this is why you call paint lift so but it's under understanding your your paints and we're doing experiments like that um, which I do a lot and I, I do enjoy um, being a bit of a scientist <laughs> as far as things like this are concerned. I enjoy understanding how things work. 
and um, I don't know, maybe it's my my OCD or something, but I, I, I remember when I was a child I was always ripping things apart to find out how they worked and trying to, and if there was something I wanted to know how was, what, 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 what's in that? What is in that? What's in that stuff? What's in it? And I'd research and research and research and research until I found out what was in it. And it's taken me a long time, in fact, to find out what's in acrylic paint, how it's made, the processes of paint. And I've actually visited um, paint manufacturers. I was, I'm lucky enough to have a friend um, that works in um, in that area, in that section of they actually make acrylic paint, so I can get a lot of my materials from there, from source, which is good, and that's what I do. There you go. How's that look? Looks in, it's looking pretty good. I mean, we built up a beach, so we've got a couple of different tones in there now. So I'm just going to use the same brush. I'm just going to use a little bit of that burnt ember, touch of black like we did when we, we did that area there, which we're going to be coming back onto in a second. I'm going to put a little rock there like that. There we go. And we're going to put another rock shape there. We're going to have rocks. We're going to have rocks on there. There we go. And another one, another one there like that. And we're going to have another one there. That's just the side of it. I'm going to put some light on the side of that. I'm going to put a little bit of light on the side of that now, in case I forget. Because I've done that before. I thought, I know, I put a bit of a bit of a light there. So I've done light one side, dark in the side. So it just looks as if the light is just catching that. And that will that'll remind me then to put a bit of highlight on these things. So let's get a bit more burnt ember, a bit of black. And let's put a an almighty rock there like that. We can tidy up the bottom of it later on. Another rock there. There we go. That's a big one. Well it wasn't going to be, but it is now. <laughs> now let's put another rock there. There we are. There's a rock shape. And we could put a rock there as well. We could have a little rock pool there, couldn't we? Let's do that. Let's just put a little rock pool in there maybe. Because you'll see them on the beaches, especially where, where I live anyway, a couple of little rocks here and there, and like that. There we go. It's just a start. It's just a start. Now I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer. Okay, so I think I'm going to use my little trick and um, of knocking back the background to touch. So this is a little bit of mixing white. Um, this is obviously made by Windsor Newton. There's other manufacturers out there, but um, I just need a little bit of that. Thinking white is very, very um, transparent, and it's it's a really nice uh, way to to kill back the. Um, I moved that but there. The the kill back if you've painted something a bit too dark in the background, and you wanna you wanna dull it back a bit using a little bit of zinc white like this uh, is, is a really good um, method to do that and you just thin it down a bit and then you just you can just go over a section like that and then just basically put in a, a thin glaze that will wash over we can do a bit of on that sky as well it's not going to hurt and um, it's, it's a really good way of of dulling something back as a hair there Hmm. Let's see if we can get that out in a second. Little hair. Come on, hair. I got it. There we go. So just dial that back a touch. And the more you do that, dry it and then do it again and dry it and do it again the more you do that the further back that will actually look so i'm just going to blend that up there and i'm going to get the the hairdryer on that again i'm not going to do it all over um, because i want to pick up um, a small brush now uh, let's get a small brush. I'm just going to pick up a little detail brush. This is just a number four brush. 
um, going into a bit of green. I'm going to lighten that green a little bit now. Maybe put a bit of your yellow to it. I want to make it look more green. I want to put some. Origin. And these are quick paintings. Even even if they, even if you've been painting this for you know a couple of hours, um, you can paint paintings like this for you know, hours, hours and hours and hours. And, and and the bigger the canvas, then it can come. It can turn into days, weeks even. Um, but when you're starting off, if you just try and aim to complete something, and um, maybe give yourself two hours or something like that and see and then just stop give yourself a time scale stop and then assess it and I, and I never throw anything away I've still got paintings or photographs of paintings that I've done in the early days and I look back on them and I think wow there's a lot of improvement there we've I've improved a lot and, and this is what you've got to you've got to do you've got to keep improving on your last painting and that way you'll just be get better and better and better and we'll never we'll never be happy as artists we're never happy with our work um i just lightened it up again just a bit lighter don't forget acrylic paints dry at least two shades darker so we've got a bit of grass and hedges and whatever this is just little blots of color like that just to give a little bit of a a distancey effect now I want to bring in a little bit of burned umber. I add a little bit of blue to that. I want to cool that down. I'm going to bring in maybe some rocks or something there. Okay, so I just lightened a little bit of a uh, burnt umber. Maybe I need a bit lighter than that. I just want a little bit of contrast here so you can see there may be something going on. Breaking our line up just a touch. This blotch is a pink, just to. Uh, I'll do for now. It's just something to break that edge up, really. I don't know what that is down there, but it could be anything. Right. Now, we need to have a look at this a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to pick up um, a short flat. And I'm going to bring in some of this light blue colour. And we said we wanted to put a rock pool in here, so we'll put a little bit of a... bit of water there maybe and we can have this water coming down and dry brushing it on an angle like that and if we dry brush it across the sand that we painted on so it looks as if it's wet and you've got a little bit of color so not too much paint but just a dry brush technique so really really speaking that that there's very little paint on the brush and you're just scrubbing this on a bit of sand showing Maybe a wave has just come in, or the tide's on the way out. Maybe there's just little bits of water there. 
put a bit of water under there. Let's bring this water down. I'm just going down this way now, just to make it look. It's an optical illusion, like as if it's just wet, maybe. Just picking up a little bit of light. I think you hope you can see that. I'm going to pick up a bit of white. It's on the very tip of my brush. And now I'm going to try and get some foam in here. Just a little bit of light. Oops, right, we need to dry brush that again. I went a bit thick, so I'm going to get a bit of tissue paper and just balance that off a touch. Get a bit of that blue and come across. So horizontal and vertical strokes. We're giving an optical illusion that maybe it's just catching a bit of light or something there we go we want a lot of this um don't want a lot of that water a lot of that reflection and just maybe a little bit of light in there like that trying to be sparing when i'm putting this A few little light breakery type things, maybe it's a bit of foam as the water. It looks like as if the tide is going out, so there's not that much way, wave when the tide is going out. Well, I haven't noticed it anyway. So I'm going to just put that brush down a second. I'm going to pick up um, my little detail brush. Um, I'm going to go into this light grey that we made. Because I want to just put a little bit of highlight on some of these rocks. Because if it's just catching the light. Like this. And we said we need to put some light on there. And then um, we can darken up the backs of these so there's a little bit of shadow in there like that. There you go. It's a bit of a rock there. Shadow. Just a touch of black here and there, just to balance things off a touch. Thank you. looking pretty good I think I, I quite like that um, what I really need to do is get a little bit of water foamy patterns maybe just breaking down there like that
Looks pretty good. I like that. A little bit of detail, just just touch these rocks. There's a little bit of ripple coming down like that. Now we need to put. Um, let's get a little bit of blue, and we're just going to put. A little carrot there like that and then we're going to get a little bit of yellow it's on the tip of the brush and we're going to put another little carrot there maybe that is not showing up as it should I'll do there we are so two little marks like that and let's get a little bit of gray made up so on the tip of this very small detail brush, I don't know what number it is, number one it is, number one. I'll just put a couple of lines like that. And you've got a couple of lines over here, a little bit of black. A little bit of black now. A couple of people walking on the beach. You can just about see them. Um, I can show you that again if you want me to. Um, we'll just put a nice. We'll put light blue now here. Well, we'll put a slightly bigger person then, just to give it a little bit of dimension then. So it's a carrot basically. All he's drawing is drawing a a shape like that. And we can put some. Legs in and little head, just a shape. That's all it is, a shape like that. Just a little bit of shadow underneath, just like as if he's walking there. And uh, we can touch up a little bit of detail on the ones closer to us. We can just put a little bit more detail in, just to balance it up a touch. But looks like somebody's there. Uh, heads are roughly about the same length, uh, same plane, but. The, sh the sizes are different, of course. Obviously, the closer they are to you, um, the bigger they're going to be. But um, these are quite big rocks, in this fact. Um, we could put um, we could put a sailboat in here, maybe. Let's put a sailboat in. Like that. Could be um, could be a little sailboat, or it could be a, a, a little um, one of those windsurf things. I suppose it could be something like that. Anything like that, really, just to add a little bit of interest. You could, you know, you can go to town really, and uh, we can put our little seagulls in. There's a little seagull there. A little seagull there. And a little seagull there. We we'll get some white on our brush. Just give it a little fleck of white like that. There you go. You could put some seagulls in, maybe like that. Little black dot. Little black dot. There's a couple of seagulls. You could have a little dog in on a lead, barking at those seagulls. He's running along there now. Yeah, he's just got off his lead. Look, he's just 
he's just running he's chasing some seagulls and um, some of these seagulls just taken off there we go, a couple of seagulls taken off because the dog is barking there you go, what's that? <laughs> Uh, you can continue adding detail to this as much as you like now I upload um, every Monday um, so if, if you like what you've seen today please subscribe there's a subscription button below at the end of the video um, please like liking uh, my videos always helps um, but if you dislike them well that works as well I don't mind either way but um, I like likes um, so please up uh, I upload every uh, Monday, so please like and um, share this video if you want. Um, I, I think that's as far as I'm going to take it today. So thank you very much for joining me in the studio. Have a bit of fun with that. I hope you've learned something, and um, I will see you on the next one. Bye.